always had to hurry up and talk real fast like this because nobody ever listened to me. They really did, but I didn't think they did. But um, So Keith really, and I have notes here on recycled paper to where we don't waste, and he needs to be on television. He needs to be on talk show like um, The View. Oh, my goodness. Can you imagine that? I'm looking up at you again. The View. Would that not be if, if Keith, Keith Andrew had, and he's not paying me to do this. I don't even, I've not met him until now. If he had a talk show and let people talk, let him talk. Um, so I like that. Anyway, about me, um, I made my living. I wanted to be an executive assistant back in 1979. We are the class of 79. And my husband's always telling me, he said, you know, there's just something about that class of 79. And when Trish and Tony Grant, when you were interviewing them, and I wrote this down, Tony said, you know, all the creative people are kind of a little off. <laughs> <laughs> all living a joy of joyous life. I love it. You know, and, and maybe we are. Maybe I, I, I know I am. Um, but it's that spark that God puts in us to give us a talent to do different things. So he gives us many talent. I mean, back to where I was, I bet you're like, I cannot believe that I asked this woman to interview. <laughs> I bet you're like, listen to her, she's just ranting and raving. Um, anyway, he gives us many talents, and mine was administrative, one of them, but I always knew that I wanted to be, do something with writing. So back in the 90s, I registered my stage name in my county, thinking one day I want to be a writer. Well, we think of our dreams, but then life takes over. Husbands leave, new ones come, um, things happen, you have children, you, um, you don't have children, you know, um, people die, and then all of a sudden it's there, and it's time. It's not always your time, and now that I look back, I'm like, wow, and I look at that journey, and I'm like, oh, goodness, you get overwhelmed, you're like, it was leading up to this. It was leading up to this. So the point I'm making here is probably completely <laughs> opposite to the way I started this sentence. But it's got to be your time, and, and, and God knows your time. And what I think is so weird is so funny, and I'm a comedian at heart. I can't remember whether I told that to Keith beforehand or before we started. And so I'm kind of nuts anyway, but... It would really flip people out if they actually knew that they've been doing the Lord's work all this time and they don't even know it. I mean, he's <laughs> even got atheists working up with him. So the way I came about as a screenwriter, finally getting to it, is um, I went. I was in a, a phase of my life. We cared for my um, invalid brother-in-law for about eight years, and my children have grown. And um, I thought, you know, we had a lot of friends die. A lot of friends are dying this our age. And, and I told my husband, I said, you know, we need to do something, do this. Do we need to do what we want to do now because we can, like, die tomorrow. So it was like a, you know, a big gasp in my life. And, and so I took, started taking acting classes at John Casablanca's. Started taking acting classes and um, thought I'll do commercials. You know, I'll learn acting. And, and I'd already wrote one screenplay. Okay, I'm going backwards. I'm going backwards. This is probably going to be your craziest interview you've ever had looking at that chick. <laughs> so, back when I worked at a uni certain university at UNC Charlotte in Charlotte, North Carolina, I took an English class. So I thought, okay, I'm going to get my degree. And this English class, I wrote an article, and the teacher said, I can see this on the, on the movie. I can see this on the Hallmark Channel. She says, um, you need to take a screenwriting class. So they were always full. It got me a book, read a couple couple sentences out of it, and started writing, which is the biggest mistake if you're a screenwriter that you can do. You have to format those right. I went years entering that one screenplay, and they didn't even read it because it wasn't formatted right. So um, that's a little little hint there for those screenwriters. But um, so wrote a screenplay, um, was going through, you know, um, some some times with marriage that we have, and. Then, kind of put it down for a while, and then this acting class thing came up. And so, started, graduated from acting, 
did all that. But, you know, even though it's a new day, whenever you're looking at castings, any of those people that are looking at castings, it's always thin, fit, 35-year-olds. Or, you know, you can do the 60 to 80-year-olds, that, that's background. But when you're talking about major feature films and things, it's hard to find a middle-aged woman with um, a little bit of weight on her. <laughs> so not that it's not out there. Um, but I did some backgrounds. I did some backgrounds and had some really good times. And, and we'll stop just a minute so you can ask a question. <laughs> so um, had some really good times. I did background in the SpongeBob movie. Now, when we went to watch it, I couldn't see myself. And, you know, that, you know the whole part was really, too, just getting acclimated with the whole industry. And um, so I'm going to get it on DVD, and I'm going to go to where I thought I saw myself go by because I was on a bicycle in the background, and I'm going to stop it. Okay. <laughs> and but take a picture, too. Yeah, yeah. So there I am. Look, everybody, right here, right here. Maybe I get a screenshot. So, um, and I'm going to tell you this, and, and I don't get into politics. I don't care what people say. That Paramount Pictures, I don't know who's who's what's what. I don't know. You know, I don't play that game. Okay, I don't play that game. That Paramount Pictures is one of the most organized people I've ever seen in my life. As far, well, I've only seen one big movie. I've only been on like one big, huge. Um, I, I've been fortunate to do a couple of little independent, just background. You know, background, that's, you know, you don't get on the, the thing, but it's a good experience. And, but that Paramount Pictures, those people were dedicated. They were hardworking. They were, um, I have never, I, I'm really into organization. I'm really into processes. I'm really like probably too much in it. Those people in North Carolina know that I don't waste their tax money because we do um, try our best to stay on processes. But great crew, very, very on top of it. And for people to think Hollywood's um, wonderful and glamorous, it's hard work. They're on set 16 hours sometimes, 12 hours. Those people work their butts off. So um, then I did um, background on, and this is where my husband, about my second husband, um, about thought I was nuts. I flew out to Louisiana to be on Dancer and the Dame, and that's with um, Billy Gardell, and I think it's Quentin Aaron, the guy who played in The Blind Side. He was the main character. Oh, that was the greatest movie. I don't know if you saw The Blind Side. Um, and then, so I played background on that, flew out. This was not a paid gig. <laughs> this was like all my credit card that I could pay to fly out there to, to Louisiana just to be able to be on that set and to see. Now, Billy Gardell is the guy that plays on Mike and Mark, Molly. And I always know him as Mike from Mike and Molly. He was the main character. And then um, Quentin Aaron, and I believe I'm quoting that, that name right too, um, he was one of the side bad guys. But I got to see them on set and see them work their magic. And that was just, just awesome to me. Now, that's another one I'm going to have to buy and, like, stop it real quick because I think I saw myself. I was a caterer, but I flashed in the background real quick. Um, that's how I started, like, with the acting. And then um, I connected up with Stage 32. Stage 32 is awesome. I could, like... I just can't say enough about them. That's where um, they have they have connected with. Um, see, RB started it, and and they connected with Joey with Happy Riders. I always think Happy Riders. I always <laughs> want to do that. I want to get Happy Riders. Okay, I'll try to be better. Not so funny. You know, being in this professional office, it's like I've got to be serious all the time. And um, I'll crack some jokes at staff meetings. Sometimes they get it, and sometimes it's just like, you know, these people are scientists, you know. I'm not saying they don't have sense humor, so they're really funny. Oh, gosh, I hope they don't watch this. They'll probably be fired. <laughs> so anyway, um, where was I at? Where was I at? To Happy Whiters. Oh, you were listening. Okay. See, he listens. He listens. He don't let in front of you. He lets you talk. You have to be on television. You just have to be on television. I wish I had cloud. I wish I had money. I wish I was somebody. Because you'd be on television if that was me. Um, can you hear me? Can they hear me? Happy Rogers. So anyway, 
So we got to have a chance free to talk to Joey in L.A., and he would kind of consult you. Now, you don't get that free anymore. Nothing's ever free, and that's another thing. I could really go off on a tangent about the world, but nothing's ever free. And so I'm sure that Joey thinks I'm nuts because when I was on the phone, I was talking real fast like this, but it's because I always had to talk talk fast as a child because nobody ever listened to me, and I knew I only had 10 minutes. That's why I don't Skype anymore. My pitches, I pitch to a lot of the thing, um, things, but I don't, I don't Skype because people won't take me seriously because they'll think I'm crazy. So Joey told me, he says, "Look, Jessica, you've got to decide: do you want to act or do you want to write?" That's whenever it hit me. I've got to make a decision because you know when you're doing the background thing, you might not get paid for half of it. And it's last minute things like they need you tomorrow. And although I have a very flexible job, my supervisor is all for this. Um, she, you know, I would have to leave the last minute. I drove all night to go to Savannah to be on SpongeBob. Um, fell asleep, ran off the road a couple of times. Don't tell my husband that. So, um, but in writing, I could still be home, um, except whenever the movie's produced and we could go out on the set. Writing, I could be me. I can be me. I don't have, now, when I say I'm somebody else, you know, we have all kinds of talents. So, like, there's a time and place for everything. There's a time to be professional, a time to um, to be crazy and wild. And, and so, so like I say, God gives us many talents. And he gave me the talent administrative that I'm now going to be able to work with knowing how to keep the books when I am doing this, this, this screenwriting. So, it's not that you're another person, it's that it's the time and place. I have to be serious sometimes, but I would love to be on a set that I could just be me, you know? And um, so, at that point, now this is really going to freak you out. Okay, this is going to really freak you out. Um, I have been a Christian since ninth grade. I have been going to church all my life. We just got a new pastor, loved my old one, but he was he was getting older and he retired and it was what after Joey told me that it was like a couple weeks after that there was this sermon in church and it just floored me and it and he, he's not kind of like screaming hard you're gonna die and go to hell you don't get saved <laughs> you know you're gonna lose like you better go right now you better go to this altar because you're just gonna die and go to hell I don't believe that either I don't believe that but everybody's got their thing we shouldn't you know down it that might scare somebody to death and get them up there but um. He's not that type. He wants to teach you. He wants you to learn. He wants you to know what you're getting into. Don't just run up there in fear, you know. Know what you're going to get into. <laughs> I'm going to scare you to the altar, and you're going to say yes, and then what you going to do? What you going to do then? <laughs> not going to be perfect. That's nothing that pisses me off. Some of the Christians that say you're supposed to be perfect. And anyway, so um, it hit me. I said, you know, it don't matter what I do. It doesn't matter whether I work here at the university, which I love, be an actress, which I love. I don't want to be rich and famous, though. Wait a minute. Remember where I'm at because I'm getting ready to go off on something. I don't want to be rich and famous. I just want to make a living at it. And I mean, if it's millions of dollars, that's really good, too. <laughs> I still want to drink my coffee on the porch without the paparazzi coming by, and that's a subject I could really get on. I don't want him like sneaking up, taking a picture. You know, we live in the country. My husband goes in the backyard and uses the bathroom. You know, if they were to feed between the builds, we'd feed between the builds. I don't. But you know me again. So anyway, I don't want to be that like that, you know. But um where was I? Talking about uh, sitting on the porch drinking coffee. Oh yeah, yeah. See, I'd really like to sit on the porch drinking coffee. So I don't really want to sit so anyway. So after this sermon, I said, it doesn't matter what I do. It doesn't matter what I'm a screenwriter. It doesn't matter this, this, and this, and this, and this, and this. I'm not looking at this camera, am I? There it is. It's in my coffee cup, by the way. Um, if I don't <laughs> try to follow my faith and try to do what's said, you know, if I didn't believe in Jesus Christ right now, there'd be a couple people I'd be tail out of. I mean, I would get so angry. I would get so angry at them. I just want to slap them. Sometimes you just want to slap people. And so... I said, it don't matter. That should be first in my life, and it's always last. That should be the first book I read, and I haven't opened it up in a couple, you know, while. And been going to church all my life and still can't tell you what to turn in some of the pages. But I know the Spirit's in me, and I can feel him, and he will, whoo, he'll flip you out sometime. 
so that's when it hit me, and I, and I told him, I said, Lord, told him, excuse me, you don't tell God anything. I asked him, I said, Lord, you know what I want? I want to be a screenwriter. Should I do it? What do I need to do? If I do it, I want to do it in your glory. You know, I want to show people you don't have to be perfect. Yeah, I get mad and I say God's words, you know. And so, anyway, I want you to know, now I had been on stage 32, seeing my mind's going, I can't remember where, and you're getting all these, these network requests, some are producers, some are independent producers, I just keep forgetting to look at this thing, <laughs> some are independent producers, um, and, and we all have the joy of this in us. Um, so when you get a network request, you read it and you look at, the, look at it, and it's kind of what time it is. Like if I'm on my break, or if I don't have much time, I don't get to read a lot. I try to do my things during my lunch and my break. And um, so when I got a network request, oh, that next Monday, by the way, let me tell you. <laughs> Sunday is when I ask him. Monday, within 12 hours. It may have been morning, may have been afternoon. I got a network request from a producer I didn't know. Didn't think anything of it. Didn't think a thing of it. And um, when I say didn't think a thing of it, I, I always get excited when I get these because I enjoy this network. But I didn't think, oh, a producer, you know, he wants to write some of my films that I got on my log lines. You know, I just thought, oh, great. And I, I read what he had, and he was doing a Western comedy. And I thought, you know, we love Westerns, my husband and I. We, we watch them all the time. And um, it said zero jobs left so I thought well he evidently has a screenwriter and I was not working the job button yet on, on the site I'm not working the whole site like I should because I do work full time and have a um, personal life I have to keep your husband happy you have to keep your kids happy you have to keep your church happy you have to keep everyone happy you know so um, I'm scratching my nose on this interview how awful is that it was horrible <laughs> I'm just scratching my nose so anyway um Oh, I forgot again. Um, but you know, you said you weren't using stage 32 as you were supposed oh, to. Yeah, yeah. I didn't use it all like I should. But um, so I thought, well, that's great. He's doing a comedy western. So I told him, thanks for the for connecting. You know, I said, thanks for connecting. And um, and sometimes I'll add an extra little thing. If I don't, it's not because I don't like you. It's just, it's just that I'm busy. And um, I said, I hope you're doing well in your comedy western. He wrote back and he said, I still need a screenwriter. Will you hit me up? Well, at this point, I didn't think too much of it. It didn't hit me that I had just prayed this prayer yesterday. It still hadn't hit me yet. And then I said, sure. And he told me a couple things he wanted. And it's a hired right, so I can't talk a lot about it. Um, it's his property. And um, so I sent him a sample, seven pages. Uh, during lunch that day, I went, it must have been before lunch or else after work. So I got my iPad out, and I seen a seven-page sample that next day. And, and, and again, I don't know whether it was that day or the next day. I can't remember all that right now. But then he gave me a little bit more. I got up to 20 pages, and by Thursday, we signed a contract. And I knew what to put on that contract because I had just took a contract class through Stage 32. Um, very affordable. And um, I, I don't always have the money, so I do charge it at times. <laughs> and so... I'm like, why did I take that contract class? I said, there's no way. I mean, I wasn't even near signing contracts. What would have made me take that contract class? It was exactly the way the contract class had taught me, by the way. And so I knew what I was signing. Um, you should always get an attorney anyway, too. But I did have somebody look over one contract. So anyway, I know this is probably the most boring interview you've ever done, it? and I bet you'd like, why don't you know you're going to show this nobody I bet. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, by January 30th, the Western comedy was completed. I've given it to him. Um, he thought he might have had a final answer, but that's all I can say about it. And um, I had a little bit of contact with him in June, so as far as we know, we're still going with it. I would love to see it in 2016, 2017 going to production. I don't know, you know, how that is. So that's how I started with my screenwriting. Got my little down payment that you get. I know it's real. And when I showed my husband that is when he knew. And he knew I'm not nuts anymore. <laughs> he knew, well, he still thinks I'm nuts. So, um, so that's kind of where I'm at today. Just had an interview this week. This is something I can talk a little bit about. It's going to be a hired right, too, but I'm getting ready to start. Okay, I'll say this, and after this, I'm going to hush, then you can ask questions. You can ask questions before. I mean, this is your network. You know? <laughs> so, 
and you really have to be on TV. People, somebody needs to watch this and get this man on television, okay? So, anyway, so I've been doing some pitching through stage 32, and um, I'm going back trying to finish some of my, I have so many screenplays started, and I've got to get them finished, and, and I've got to get them formatted, but I've pitched a couple, Joey's, you know, back and forth, and they rate you now, so that way I know kind of where I'm going, they give you um, suggestions of what you need to do, and that really helps out. So... I was kind of bum fuzzled. I'm like, okay, now which one do I need to do? Do I need to go with the horror one and try to get it done or the one I initially want done? I want to open a new concept nursing center all over the world. You know, we'll start with the United States, okay? <laughs> our, our elderly's not getting care. I'm sorry. Government needs to step into this. They need to do something. They need to care for our elderly. And I got samples, I can tell you. But anyway, we won't get into that. So, I prayed another prayer. This is going to freak you out, too. And, and, you know, those people go, oh, I just prayed for you. You know, I'm going to pray this. I'm going to pray that. You know, people think they're nuts. You know, sometimes, I mean, you know, I'm just telling you, the most common person thinks the person's nuts. So, that this really happened. I mean, I'm t it really will. It really, really will mess with your mind. So, I said, you know, Lord, you need to tell me what to do now. You know, I'm I'd need to know what you want me to do. You want me to do this one? You want me to work for this guy? I even gave some samples out. I've done a couple job ads, you know, gave some samples. Some people was like, you call, you're a Christian and you wrote that? Well, yeah. <laughs> because that person's a person too, and he's just as good as me. And I'm no better than that person. And if I can touch that person by writing his, but yet put a little different twist to it, you know, that might, you know, take him out of that genre into a Another one that, you know, I don't know. I don't know. That's another thing. People judge. People shouldn't be judging people. whole world would be a whole lot better if we wouldn't judge people. Now, do I do all this? I'm sure I do sometimes. I've got, like, all these logs coming out of my eyes. You know, when they say, what's that verse? You know, i got to get the log out of my eye before I try to get the splinter out of yours. That's not the way I say it, but I love Medea. Have you ever seen Medea? Tyler Perry. Oh, my goodness. Tyler Perry. You need to watch some of Tyler Perry movies. He plays this Medea. I would love to be in Tyler. I would be at home in Tyler Perry movies. Robin Williams. I always thought in my crazy head that I would work with him one day. I feel like I'm a Robin Williams and a woman's, but I'm not even a pinch of how wonderful he was. So, anyway, here comes this meeting request at work. We have this network thing where all the retail people get together, you know, and they network. Well, I have not been to that in three and four years. But we're on a research campus here, and we had tried to – I'm not looking at this. So I bet it looked like I'm, like, looking from far, don't it? <laughs> so anyway, um, I just feel weird talking to this little microphone here. Anyway, so I, I think my eyes are probably weird and going different places. Um, so I have not been to that two or three four years because I have an administrative form that same day that we created. and But this time, we didn't have it. Well, for the summer, um, they always send me who's speaking, and I'm always thinking, well, I can't go to that. Well, this one lady that spoke at our administrative form was going to be speaking, and something said, you know, you need to go to that meeting. I thought, I'll have time to go to that meeting, because I'm going on vacation that Friday. This is a Thursday before I'm going on vacation. It's in the fiscal year. I do not have time to go to that meeting, but something told me, you need to re RSVP that meeting. So I did. Two weeks later, it was the week of the meeting. I was getting ready to go on vacation. It was in the fiscal year. We were so busy, I didn't have time to breathe. And I thought, there's no way I'm going to go to that meeting. And so I said, you need to go to that meeting. So I go to the meeting. Don't have time to go to the meeting, but I went to the meeting. And talked to the lady, told her about my movie. Um, and she said, you remember that book I wrote? I told you I was going to write. And I said, well, no, because I can't remember nothing anymore, you know. I can't. Later on, I got to thinking I did remember it. She said, he just came to me the other day and asked me, do I know a screenwriter? I'm like, I was about floored. And then it all started, you know, kind of just like freaking me out. I go, you got to be kidding me. I said, well, you know, I'm an amateur. I've only got one on my belt. I hadn't seen it yet. I'm sure it's coming. I just, you know, I would love to. So everything came about and talked to the gentleman this week. Well, no, not this was today. Today's Friday. Talked to him on Tuesday. And I've got 25 pages written of his script so far. So tell me this is not 
you know, meant to be. But that's that's my life. I'm sticking to it. And this is what I'd like to do. I'd like to go from the business realm of sitting in an office all day doing bookkeeping to working in the industry as a screenwriter. I now know I want to be a screenwriter. Now, you know, if Tyler Perry needs me on his show <laughs> and needs me on one of his movies, um, I finally got my, my husband's not a movie goer. He's about seven years older than me. He's a different, different class, meaning, meaning class, year class, not class, like personality class. But like he was class 72, but I said about this class 79. In fact, I got a, I'm making a movie about it. But, um, well, I'm writing one. Um, but yeah, if Tyler Perry ever wants me on his movie, I would love to be on one of his movies. He is a nut. You need to watch Tyler Perry. I'm looking here. I'm looking over here. Here. I don't know. Anyway, so that's where I'm at, where I'm at today. And um, another person, episode 230 of Keith Andrew Network, Beth Newberry. That was awesome. Now, both of these, she said discipline, hard work. And she was talking about the community that people shouldn't be labeled, like black, white, Mexican, Muslim, whatever. We shouldn't be labeled. Just because somebody's different from you, you don't make them any less. We're all equal in God's eyes. And people just need to learn that. Now, do I get mad at people? Yeah. You could love somebody and still hate what they do, especially if they kill somebody or, you know, you can hate them. But um, you, you still got to pray for them as much as that sounds kind of, ooh, you know. Um, I had to pray for myself too, Lord, help me, Jesus. So another thing that I, I thought was real neat that Tricia was talking about, you know, her man talk, and um, she was talking about um, all kinds of things. And teachers, I like the way she talked about the teachers. Um, and this was a couple of weeks ago that I, I did it. I can't remember exactly what she touched on, but you know, in our county, let me tell you what they did. Let me tell you what they did. In our county, they gave out raises, or maybe it's our state. You know, I can't keep all these things together. They gave all the teachers, and my daughter's teacher, and I'm glad. You know, that's like 5% raise. We don't ever get 5% raises here in the state anymore. I can't remember what the percentage was. Could have been two, could have been seven. Anyway, but the ones that had been there 30 years, they weren't going to get it. I mean, what's that telling about America? The hard worker. Yeah, you know, you're not going to get this, but we still <laughs> want you to keep working. So, um, okay, I'm going to hush. And you just, you can go from here. Um, I hope you post it. And if you don't, if you think this is going to hurt your network, do not post it. Okay. <laughs> you need to be on television. You don't need to hurt your network. <laughs> well, so is there anything you have? Well, wrapping up, do you have any funny stories you like to share? I there's two of them that it has you know, be saying God has a sense of humor. He does. You know, two thousand I think it was two thousand seven or two thousand and eight. Me and my sister were working in retail and we were taking the bus because, you know, we couldn't park in the commons. We had to take the shuttle bus from the train station to the commons. So we're sitting there in traffic. And the song came on the radio by ACDC, You're on a Highway to Hell. <laughs> I like that one, yeah. Yeah, it, that's funny. Well, see, what's so funny is I love hard rock. Um, um, we invented it with sticks and um, like the ACDC. Pink Floyd, I was talking to you about that sign behind you. Um, and um, I love Tina Turner, loved Whitney. That was a waste um, of a voice when she passed. Um, I love hard rock music. I just love Billy. Billy Joel's not hard hard rock, but um, I, I'm just a hard rock music. And 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 you know, as a Christian, I probably should be listening to gospel all day. I love gospel music, but my radio is always on the rock channel. Um, I have one thing I can't tell you who sings what. I just like hearing the music. You know, I can sing to some of it, some of it I can't. Some people I can tell you who it is. Some people I can't. But yeah, yeah, he is he is funny about that. And um. It, it, it is. But as far as something funny, um, people tell me I'm funny. I don't think I'm funny. I just I just tell the way it is, and I don't I don't know. Maybe it's my facial expressions. I've noticed since I've gotten older, I've gained weight. And when I talk, my eyes give this googly, like, wild woman look, you know. So I don't know whether it's that or not. But um, I don't really know of any funny. I do, I do know um, 
this might be a little bit, I know you're uncensored and stuff. It, it, both things that I had, you had to really be there. Um, that I could just think of. Um, one was, you know, jewelry, jewelry. Okay, I had to learn my R's when I was in, in school. So I say jewelry. But ju- jury duty. Jury duty. Not jewelry, jury duty. <laughs> a lot of people are called into jewelry duty. Okay, don't jury duty. <laughs> Okay, whichever one it is. I was called in one year. And, you know, they get you up and interview. See, I get real nervous when I have to talk to somebody up front. This is great. I love this because, like, my door's closed. Nobody sees me. You know, it's just me and you. And, but I was called in, and they actually called me up to interview me. You have to sit up in this box at jewelry. Jury duty. Okay, you have to sit in this box. Then each of the people, they will take and interview the people meaning the two the DAs or whatever they are the two attorneys for the good and the bad you know whatever we're not good and bad we're just you know the one that's accused of it. don't make sound judgmental bad and so it was a car accident so they're asking you you know what your name is and then they ask you if you can to anybody and I'm like you know and they say have you ever been in a car accident I'm at the point of passing out at that time I was a lot younger but I was about to pass out I start getting a red rash going at my neck and I'm from the south and we're called rednecks and it was literally a redneck you know and people say I have this southern accent I don't hear it but anyway so I was so nervous and they said have you ever been in a car accident well I said yeah I've been in a car accident well, could you explain it to me I said well I said it was when I was 17 I was taking this girl to work and I was talking real fast like this I said, and I ran the red light because I was talking to her. I wasn't used to having anybody in the car with me. I said, and a car hit us. We rolled three times, hit a telephone pole. We flew out. They said we looked like astronauts. I laid it on my head, and the whole place just died laughing. The whole, I say congregation, whatever it is. What's the courtroom? Courtroom. The whole, con- the whole courtroom was dying laughing. They had to shut him up. Okay. <laughs> And he looked, and I'm like, why are they laughing at I'm just telling them about the car accident. He looked at me, and both of the attorneys were doing all they can to keep from laughing. And they said, you're excused. I did not have to be on jury duty for telling the truth. Just tell the truth, people. You know, tell the truth. Do I always know? Okay, you know. So, well, Andrew, uh, Andrew, Keith, I'm getting ready to have, my husband's name's Keith. <laughs> and I'm getting ready to get a son-in-law named Andrew. Now tell me that's not a coincidence. <laughs> So, so, thank you for this. You really need to be on television. Has anybody come to ask you about this, about being on television? People have told me I should, but I don't know. Maybe you can point me in the right direction or unless you know people. Well, I wish. I wish I was somebody. I wish I was somebody that could just say, hey, this man needs to be on television. Somebody <laughs> needs to be on television. Where's Tyler Perry at? I just love Tyler Perry. There's so many more people I love. There's so many more people that's in television. I, I shouldn't have just pinpointed one. Um, they're just hysterical. They the, the lady that plays on Mike and Molly, Melissa McCarthy. Oh my gosh, um, I love Whoopi Goldberg. Um, Bird. I don't even have to pronounce half these names, but um, I love these people. Um, oh, Tommy Lee Jones, honey, put me in a movie with Tommy <laughs> Lee Jones. That man needs to be on the. What do you call it? Uh, America's best looking man what's that magazine that magazine had to always had Brad Pitt and all them people I Brad Pitt's a good looking man too <laughs> uh, Angelina Jolie oh my gosh she's, she's going to be a good director get out there girl get them things directed that's what I say um, I shouldn't even name names because I'm leaving I'll, I'll, I'll hang up from here and I'll say oh my gosh one of my favorites is this I didn't even say this so anyway you just keep doing this. And things are not always going to go good in life. There's going to be tragedies. There's going to be bad things. And people are going to put you down up one side and down the other. They're going to... That's that one song I listened to. I should have been playing my iTunes while we were doing this. Postonia. Now, you're too young to remember this song. But whenever I was back in the day... Let me look at my iTunes. Back in the day... I'm going to turn my iTunes on. This is what we... Who sang it? Oh... Come on, come on, come on. We're about out of time. Um, that's because I'm trying to find it. I'm not going to be able to find it. Oh, I love um, the cover of the Rolling Stone. Uh, I like that one, too. And I like Crazy by Narls Barkley. But what's the one about um, people 
stone you when you do this. Everybody must get stoned. Uh, this isn't it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This isn't it. Uh, oh, you know the one. Do you know the one I'm talking about? Uh, you, you've got to find this song. Okay, wait a minute. And there's this from those Christians out there going, okay, well, she's Christian. What's on that? <laughs> Song before it was. He get me, it was my, my way, work and go to my greatest spirits. <laughs> it's a good song of us. Uh, it's a good song of us used in Almost Famous. Okay, excuse me? Oh, the song you were just playing every day. Oh, wait a minute, I turned down the thing. Wait a minute, wait a minute, I can't hear you. Stop a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay. Wait a minute, let me cut this off. Do, okay, do what? Oh, the, the song you're playing was used in the movie Almost Famous. Was it? Yes. This one? Oh, see, see, and I can't remember stuff like that. I love that song. But this other song is talking about everybody must get stoned. And back <laughs> in the day it was, back in the day it was done, you, people thought it was, you know, there wasn't smoking dope. Everybody must get stoned. But that's not what it meant. It meant people's always stoning you. They always... That something, no matter what you do, people are not going to like it. And they're going to always stone you. So that's what that, that song really meant. And it is pretty neat. But but anyway, do you have any more questions? I, I'm sorry. I talked the whole time. No, that's fine. Wrapping up, do you have anything you want to say to your fans and listeners or how they can follow you on Twitter, Facebook? Yeah, well, I have to say that y'all need to get together and get this man on TV. And I am on Facebook, Jessica Rose, and I am on Twitter, Jessica Rose. And if you go follow Keith Andrew Network, I'm one of his people. So then you can click to me because I found out there's a lot of Jessica Roses. But I, I did that name in the 90s back when it was kind of for a privacy thing and um, had it registered. So there's a lot of those. But if you go on Keith Andrew Network, you will see um, me on there. I believe we hooked up on, um, I know Facebook, so... Um, thank you so much for this.